Uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Charles Felix with South Florida Hospital News and Healthcare Report. And we're giving you an introduction, or I say part two, of disability insurance. And today we're talking with Eddie Dabdu from the Dabdu Law Firm. And his firm specializes in disability claims for physicians. Eddie, welcome to South Florida Hospital News and Healthcare Report. Good morning, Charles. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, the firm as a whole specializes in disability insurance. And, and within that specialty, we, we've been focusing a lot on own occupation insurance policies for physicians of all sorts of medical specialties. And how long have you, how long has the firm been around, uh, Eddie? Well, I was born out of law school into disability insurance. So I've been practicing for, I think, 18, 19 years. Uh -huh. And um, it, it wasn't much long, longer after my, I think maybe my third or fourth year, I started um, a partnership. And then shortly thereafter, I started uh, my own law firm. So we've been around for a while and this is all we've ever done. Right. And what you found that the disability insurance area is, is a needed area especially when it comes to physicians, which leads me into uh, our first kind of topic. And we're going to go to three different topics relating to disability insurance. So if a, a physician uh, finds himself in the situation, uh, what to do, uh, when should a disability claim uh, be filed or submitted, uh, Eddie? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think it's a question every physician I've ever represented does not know the answer to. But th that is the most basic question. And it really illustrates the reason why you need the expertise of a disability insurance attorney. Um, the short answer is that uh, the, the, the physician is the only person who can determine when it's time to submit a claim. Because that's a personal question first. Mm -hmm. When is it that your medical condition or conditions are interfering with your ability to carry on with your practice in the way you have been practicing for many years? It's at that point you need to move forward with a disability claim. And that's the, that's on the that's on the personal side. That's a decision that the individual makes. No, on the legal side, Charles. Mm -hmm. We've got all sorts of deadlines in the insurance policies, right? Every disability insurance policy has what we call a notice of claim provision. And typically, the notice of claim provision requires the insured notify in writing the insurance company of the need to submit a claim. And then it will set forth the time frame to do so, typically about 30, maybe 60 days from the onset of your disability. And um, so you're looking at one to two months after you've become disabled to notify the insurance company. Uh, and I, I, what I should also point out here though, is even though that requirement is built into insurance policies, I have represented so many physicians over the years who are six months, nine months, one year, two years, several years late. Because the, what I have realized is is medical professionals have spent their entire adult life preparing to become a physician and then practicing and specializing in and honing in on their skill set. This has kind of defined who they are as a person. And so when disability strikes, they don't think it's time to submit a disability claim. That's mm -hmm. not the knee jerk reaction. Instead, what they start to think about is how do I continue practicing by adjusting given my circumstances? Mm. And so the reality is most people who come to me probably come to me a little bit too late, but it's not fatal. It doesn't destroy the claim entirely unless, and this is a hugely important point for your listeners, unless they have radically changed their practice so much so over the years that when they come to me and they say, Eddie, I am an orthopedic surgeon, okay? And I can't perform surgeries anymore. Okay, let's look at your practice. Well, 
You've stopped performing orthopedic surgery six years ago, and you've now transitioned fully into what is essentially a different occupation. The ship might have sailed on you being disabled from your own occupation as an orthopedic surgeon. You should have notified me. I would have notified the insurance company six years ago. And so now you have a different type of disability claim. So I caution your listeners not to fall into a situation where they've eroded or changed their occupation on account of their disability. You must contact someone like me immediately so we can navigate that process. Would you say, then you would say that depending on the specialty or that the physician is practicing is an important factor relating to the reporting of the disability claim on the policy. Because if not, that, I guess, that benefit could be eroded by changing of your profession, per se, uh, and still earning income, I would guess. I think you're, yeah, you're, 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 Absolutely right. Case in point, a liver transplant surgeon whose specialty is built on the ability to do liver transplants, mm -hmm. right? if they stop performing liver transplants, but continues to build up a surgical practice on just general liver surgery, mm -hmm. and, and several years go by, and then you submit a disability claim. The problem becomes is you have to retroactively create an argument that, hey, I, I violated the notice of claim provision by not telling you sooner insurance company. And I've transformed my occupation so much so only because of my medical condition. And so I, as an attorney, have to retroactively go back in time and, and make these arguments. And that's complicated. And what the insurance companies would, would do instead is they go, hmm, the day you submitted your disability claim, you were a general liver surgeon, mm -hmm. not, not specialty transplant. Now, I've litigated similar cases like that, and I've won those. But those issues, Charles, become hugely important in the case. And they become mountains in the way for me to, I have to destroy, I have to move those mountains, clear the path for my clients to get paid. And, and, and the wiser approach naturally is, don't do that. Contact me early. Contact someone who specializes in disability insurance early. And, and, and let's show you what the, the easier path looks like. What, yeah, which leads us kind of to the next question, I believe, which says, when and how do you notify the insurance company of your medical condition? So I guess the question is, when and how is an important factor? Yeah, so when ideally it... it, it it's back to what we were talking about. Right. We know the claim provision 30, 60 days as soon as practically possible. Even if you're choosing not to necessarily move forward with your claim, you mm -hmm. could notify the insurance carrier and say, I have this situation and I'm giving you notice. Now, you can then decide if the timing is right to push the claim forward, but at least you've satisfied the legal provision of giving notice. Now, how you do it should be in writing. Right. I've, I've had many cases over the years where clients say, Eddie, I, 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 I telephoned them three years ago and I had this conversation with them and I have my little, you know, chicken scratch handwritten notes on, 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 on what we spoke about and uh, I never heard from them again and I just didn't bother following up. That's not going to cut it. Put it in writing. Mm -hmm. if it, and with that case, I would say that in, in dealing with somebody like yourself, a professional within the business, as physicians are specialists in what they're doing and they do it well. Uh, you talking with somebody from your firm, you may be in particular, at what point should they contact you as a professional? For instance, if I'm a patient and I have a problem medically, I like to try to contact my physician before it becomes an acute situation. So you, you run into a problem. In yeah. talking in medical terms, they should contact you before the claim or the process becomes an acute situation. So they need to contact you when, Ben, Eddie, would you say, as a, as a person who has a disability policy, they've had it for a number of years, at what point should they at least make the contact with yourself, somebody from your firm, 
to discuss that and maybe not engage you at that point in time, but be able to at least set the record straight to make sure they're doing it correctly. I, I would tell people, call me as soon as you feel your medical conditions, your mental health conditions are really starting to impact your ability to practice in the way you, you're used to it. Um, what we do is we have that initial conversation. We get a very good understanding of the physician's occupation, right? Because not all, all these occupations are exactly the same. And when you're looking at our own occupation insurance policy, we need to be looking at the physician and how that physician performed his or her occupation. And once we have that complete understanding of that occupation, how it's performed, whether there's a surgical component or clinical component, what have you, we then talk about how the medical condition has been impacting it. And what I have found is that my, my clients usually have a pretty good insight into where this is going to end up going for them medically, mm -hmm. right? How much is this going to start eroding their practice, their ability to perform certain procedures, longer procedures, more complicated procedures. Maybe there's some safety concerns for patients. Those are conversations we all have at that point in time, Charles. And sometimes we end the conversation with, um, let's stay in touch. Let's see how things evolve. And I will let you know when is the right time to notify the insurance company. Other times after that initial conversation, I say, we need to give notice to the insurance company now in order to properly preserve your claim in the event you need to move forward in the, in the next month or the next six months. Right. And, and going back to the same premise on this, somebody, a younger physician, a resident, who is looking to purchase a disability policy, uh, wouldn't it be worthwhile for them to contact you on a consulting basis to make sure that they're getting the right language within their policy? So should, or should, should this situation occur to them, at least you have, as I would say, your ducks in a row at the end of the day in a policy that has already been kind of at least looked at or at least thought about. Correct. Nobody plans to become disabled, but everybody should plan their insurance in the event disability strikes. I think statistically, um, you're, you're five times more likely to become disabled and unable to work before you retire than you are to die. And, and yet everybody loads up on life insurance and they neglect to buy disability insurance. If you, if, if you, spent your adult life preparing to work uh, as a physician and certainly you have a medical specialty, you should have an own occupation specific insurance policy that, that ensures your ability to perform the substantial and, and material duties of your specific occupation. I am happy to look at uh, proposed disability insurance policies. I've done so uh, for many individuals over the years uh, and the reason is because sometimes the physicians think that the insurance policy they have is truly own occupation, but I understand how the claims are administered and litigated if that comes to be the case in court. And therefore I understand how the courts are interpreting these insurance policies as whether they're truly own occupation or kind of own occupation, you know, own occupation light. So having someone look at that up front and, and giving you that check mark of approval of this is a good insurance policy, it's invaluable. And, and, I, and I do it all the time uh, and, and I do it without charge. It doesn't take me much time to have that conversation. I've seen all these insurance policies, so immediately I can give advice on it. Right, and, and I, would, I would assume depending on your specialty, you wanna make sure that the specialty within the policy is spelled out clearly uh, and that there's no ambiguities, I would think, in that. Yeah, if, if, if your goal is to buy an insurance policy with what we call a medical specialty definition, you don't want any ambiguity about it. Sure. Well, let's, let's go to uh, one of our last questions, uh, which would be, when and how do you wind down your practice due to a medical condition? So we're, we're now at a point in time where the medical condition is there. You're working with your disability, but now you have to wind down your practice or basically do something with your practice. 
which is obviously of you, one, one of your most valuable assets. So how do you handle that, Eddie? It's, it's a case by case basis, right? We've had some clients who the practice is built around them, right? They're not necessarily part of a practice group, but it's their practice. Right. And so they have to sell the practice. And we've had clients where we facilitated helping them. They sell the practice and we, we focus on moving the disability insurance claim forward. That's more mm -hmm. of a clean break, Charles, right? Mm -hmm. As right. A, you're not going to go back in. You're not going to see patients yourself, but you can go and, and, and you, you can help with that transition process with maybe the new physician that has purchased your practice, right? Transitioning over the patients. Kind of like a consulting type situation. Indeed. And, and, and we'll, we'll usually say that can be done over a three-month period or some agreed upon time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most important thing is you're not practicing medicine, right? right? You, 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 you've pulled away from that. That's pretty clean and straightforward. I have some other um, clients who they wind down the practice over time by, by not taking new appointments, not scheduling new more, more surgeries, and they have this kind of date down the road where they're winding down. Now, I handle that up front by letting the insurance carriers know, look, we are winding down. This is what winding down looks like. The disability is already struck. My client is disabled, and, and it is for that reason that my client is winding down the practice and we spell it all out. No, if you do this right, winding down the practice over time, you know, just finishing up seeing patients, finishing up with post-surgery office visits and all that sort of stuff, that can be done over a period of time and insurance companies understand that. It's how you go about it that makes a difference. If you do it the right way, it's fine. If, yes. if you haphazardly just continue practicing and not doing it the right way, you're going to run into a problem with the insurance company. Because sure. when they're going to charges, they're going to turn around and go, aha, so yeah. you, can, you can continue um, practicing. You can continue doing surgery. So it feels more like a choice. They like to make the, how much of this is a choice versus you have to stop practicing argument. Right. So I would, I would, I would, think at that point in time that if you are a surgeon and you are winding down your practice, you would stop the surgery part of it, start seeing clients that you've had post-surgery for a period of time, and then basically refer clients who need additional surgery to other physicians as you wind down the practice. But making sure that you don't practice within the classification for your disability generally true no it's still case by case basis i, I spoke earlier to a liver transplant surgeon example right. back to the example i had a client a liver transplant surgeon who he stopped performing liver transplants he was totally disabled from his occupation as a liver transplant mm -hmm. surgeon although he continued performing general liver surgeries on a full-time basis mm -hmm. but after his disability, after he stopped performing liver transplants, there was a unique situation where they needed a transplant surgeon um, for a case, and he had to do it. Now, the insurance company argued, well, you can, you can, you look, you proved it, and we still won that case. And so the point is, disability insurance claims are not perfect, they're not clean, life happens. Mm -hmm. Right. right. And, and so we, 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 we can maneuver and, and fix things, but ideally, generally true, plan it, wind it down the right. right. And, and I think I think that in almost this is uh, this is your livelihood. This is your business. I mean, you could be young, you can be older, uh, but it is your, what, the profession that you decided to be in. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes you're not totally in control of the rest of your profession or the rest of your life. And you need to seek out a professional to help you manage through that period of time. Because if not, uh, something that you thought was very simple by just filing a claim with disability, you may find yourself at the wrong end of the, uh, at the event at the end. So dealing with somebody like yourself, Eddie, uh, is, is imperative to make sure that you at least have the ability to come out with the right answer. Uh, and I would probably also say that the insurance company isn't necessarily your friend. Oh, true. Uh, I have a job for a reason. 
I have right. specialized in disability insurance claims only for a reason. And it started off with me and now we're looking at a law firm with eight attorneys who all specialized in disability insurance. So mm -hmm. yes, exactly right. Right. Any, any last words uh, for physicians looking at this, uh, whether they be residents, whether they be early careerists, mid-careers or late careers, uh, relating to uh, the possibility of facing a disability situation in the future? Yes, you, you can never call me soon enough. I'm happy to look at the insurance policy, hear the situation uh, through a consultation and kind of give guidance on what that would look like. Uh, disability insurance claims are complex, especially for certain medical specialties, those that have a surgical component. Sometimes insurance companies like to hyper-focus on the CPT code, the RVUs, et cetera, and, and really not getting a full grasp of what that occupation entails. And so it's very important that you have somebody with the expertise in this nuanced area, kind of looking over what you're doing. You're right. The insurance companies are not looking out for your best interests. They do like your money when you pay the premium. Oh, they love it. They love that. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> they love They're it. very good at collecting premiums, not so good at paying claims. That's that's the ideal statement. And that, and that whether it be disability, whether it be any kind of insurance, that's the insurance game. They like uh, collecting money, paying it back out on legitimate claims uh, does present a problem uh, most of the time. So. Well, think about it, uh, especially in the context of disability insurance, where they're paying out claims for many years and sometimes a large monthly sum. Many years, some insurance policies have lifetime benefits. They're not just going to lie down and pay those claims. Right. But to see if there's a way to deny it. But the, 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 the experienced disability insurance attorney knows how to maneuver these claims that locks an insurance company in, gives them no way out, no alternative but to pay. Right. And, and, I, and I think the, the, the guiding light to this is if you try to do this yourself, you're going to deal with an insurance company that has uh, an army of people who are out there to try to reduce or eliminate your claim. That's it's kind of like what they like to do. You need to put something, you need to put, as I would say, somebody in your court to help you maneuver through this to make sure you get the outcome that you're due uh, based on your policy and based on the situation. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that, with that statement. Yeah. It's, it's accurate. So Eddie, I will, in, uh, in, in the information relating to this video, we'll have your contact information in it. But for those people looking at it, can you tell them how they can get a hold of you? The best way? Absolutely. You, you can find us online, longtermdisability.net. You can email me directly, eddie, E-D-D-I-E, -D -D -E, at longtermdisability.net. Um, you can call us, 305-754-2004. And happy to speak with anybody who might be facing a disability insurance claim or you've already submitted a claim and you're encountering difficulty with the insurance company. Uh, we always offer free consultations. Yeah. It's never too early, and even most importantly, it's never too late to be able to oh, give uh, oh. Eddie a call to make sure that you're getting what you deserve through your disability insurance policy. Eddie, I appreciate you coming on today, and uh, stay tuned for additional information. We were going to do a series uh, with the Dabdu Law Firm relating to disability. This is only our second uh, informational video relating to disability claims. And you'll see another one hopefully within about a month uh, and covering different topics and topics that are close to your heart and good for your practice. So with that, uh, this is Charles Felix, South Florida Hospital News and Healthcare Report with Eddie Dabdu. And we appreciate you turning in today and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you very much.